Okay, you can better mute. mute. Well, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us on this uh, live experiment. Uh, life is an adventure is what it says here in the classroom at the Great Lakes campus. And indeed, life is a adventure. We're glad that you're with us today to experiment with this format, but we're glad that you're here to hear about the ministries of Great Lakes Christian High School and Great Lakes Bible College. So over our uh, meeting this afternoon, we are going to have some live content but a fair bit of video content that's been uh, produced by a variety of different people to share with you that tells about our ministry and about the year the Great Lakes has had. Uh, COVID has created uh, a number of uncertainties with our ministry, but God has been faithful to this work. The first thing we're going to do this afternoon is we are going to hear a reading of this year's scripture theme, 
Joshua Rose is going to bring us that. Whenever you're ready. The scripture this year for Great Lakes Christian High School is Psalm 27, verse 1. I will be reading Psalm 27, verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above, my, above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Now I'd like to take a moment to lead us in a word of prayer as we begin our meeting. Holy Father, we are grateful for this opportunity. We're grateful for technology and for what it makes possible. We're thankful, Lord, for the year that was, uh, for the many successes, and for the ways you've demonstrated your faithfulness to both of our schools, the high school and the Bible college. We ask, Lord, a blessing on this time this afternoon as we share information about the financial details and some of the other details of our school. But Lord, we ask that you help us to find uh, more partners, more people to serve on our corporation lists, more people to serve as donors to our school and volunteers for its many programs. We're thankful for the way you have been faithful to our school. Be with us this afternoon. Through the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. On behalf of the high school board, I'd like to say a word of welcome to you as you've joined our meeting this afternoon. COVID has, of course, introduced all kinds of uncertainties to our program, but God has been faithful to our school. Some of the evidence of God's faithfulness you can see in the annual report that's available for download on the email that you received today. We'll talk more about how God has been in the small details of this school, but the one encouragement I'd like to give you, the supporters of Great Lakes Christian High School and Great Lakes Bible College, is to keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open to the ways that God is blessing our schools, even through this pandemic. There are small signs and small wonders that are available to us through this pandemic, through things that we're having to learn to do that we've never had to do before. This, just last week, we had a parent council meeting, and of course it was online with Zoom, the way a lot of things are at school. And something interesting happened. For the first time in our school's history, we had parents from Nigeria and parents from Asia participating in a parent council meeting. What a wonderful blessing to our school to finally be connecting with parents across the world, literally, in a brand new format. I look forward to hearing about other opportunities for parents from afar to get more involved in the ministry of Great Lakes Christian High School. This AGM being online like this is also another blessing and I'm hopeful that we can work the kinks out with the voting this afternoon and work out the details to be able to do this. I would like to ask you to participate in our ministry using these new opportunities. If you haven't already on your screen up in the far right corner, I'd invite you to click the subscribe button. That will allow you to keep track of posts and videos that are made by Great Lakes. There's a bell right next to it. Click on the bell and you will be notified when new content is made available. If you are watching this AGM and you aren't currently a corporation member, I'd invite you to contact Brad Cook here at Great Lakes. Brad Cook at glchs.ca. Brad.cook. Um, let him know or even just ask him if you are currently a corporation member. We have 88 corporation members, that's it, that support both of our schools. And we need your participation to continue to provide the programming that we do. 
We invite you to get involved in these things and encourage other people to get involved as well. Before we move on to the first piece of business this afternoon, I'll invite Don Rose, our CAO, to come up and share with us how the voting is going to work this afternoon. Okay, to begin, first off, if you are not a corporation member and you haven't paid a corporation fee for 2019-2020 or 2020-2021, you don't have a link. And this is a way to ensure that the only people who are voting are corporation members. So I encourage you, as Noel said, if you're not a corporation member, to consider that because this is one of the privileges and responsibilities our corporation members have. For some of you, you got a, an email and it had uh, two links that are now visible in that, uh, in that email. Sorry, one link. And it'll take you to a web page. And on that web page, you're going to see two orange boxes. The first one says continue to meeting. And the second one says join virtual meeting. If you click the join virtual meeting, it's going to take you here to our YouTube live channel. The first one, continue to meeting, and I have mine open on my computer right now. I clicked it and you should see several motions that are going to be made today. But at the moment, if you look to the right of all those motions, it says that they have not been opened. So in just a minute, Noel Walker is going to get up and he's going to talk about the minutes from last year and whether or not uh, we are going to pass the motion that we approve those minutes. For a, a few minutes, that motion will be opened and those of you who have a link and are corporation members you can vote on that and then after a few minutes the window will be closed it'll be closed again and we'll have our result and report to you every time we pass a motion so that brings us to the moment of truth uh, be patient with us as we work out the kinks for this detail but our first motion this afternoon is a motion to receive the minutes from the 2019 annual general meeting. These minutes were provided to you through email back in June for those of you who are corporation members. So for corporation members, you are going to have an opportunity now to click on that link and either approve that motion or uh, not approve that motion. Now, this motion was made by myself and seconded by Greg Tui. And I've got my phone out here. Are so there any, is there, I mean, does anyone have a question? Before? Yes, is I guess we should ask that. If you've got access to the chat, uh, you could ask questions at this point about the minutes. Mine says the motion has not been opened. No, nope, it hasn't yet. Okay, we're going to be uh, checking on that just in a moment. Our first motion. Okay, it should appear to be open. Oh, there it is on my phone. I see that it's available. Um, are there any questions available through chat? So the meeting minutes from the 2019 AGM were available through email last June. And so if you would uh, click on that vote button, you'll have an opportunity to say yes, to say no, or to abstain. I need to vote on my computer here. <laughs> Get out of your way then. To ensure that anyone who has a link to vote and has figured it out, we're going to leave that open for a moment. We're going to move to the GLCC financial presentation, which is a pre-recorded video by Jim Whitfield. So we're going to run that uh, through. When it is done, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. If you have a question during the presentation, send it to the live chat and we'll make sure that after the presentation is finished, we'll answer your questions and we'll pass the motions that are associated with it. So we'll go to the presentation now. 
Hi, uh, I'm Jim Whitfield, uh, the business manager for Great Lakes Christian College. Uh, this is our third take on, on this recording, so maybe uh, I'll get it right this time. First of all, let me welcome you uh, to the financial presentation uh, for Great Lakes for the last fiscal year, ended June 30th, 2020. I want to identify that we're welcoming, uh, of course, the board members, but also the corporation members and any other visitors that are joining us on YouTube. So I'm sure you're looking forward to a financial report and you're excited by it, by it. but I want to um, identify some of the key things that impacted these financial results. And many of them you may be aware of, maybe you don't know, but I think understanding these, these events will help us understand the financials as we go through them. And also, I think it also, um, sorry to repeat myself, but it I think we can see God's hand uh, in working with the school and blessing the school the way things have happened. So let me start off with identifying that when COVID hit in March uh, this year, uh, we pivoted or moved to a one-to-one -one program, uh, which is each student having their own computer device, much like this one, um, so uh, that the pedagogical or learning environment at Great Lakes would be kind of more on the cutting edge, similar to what they may, say, may see at university. We invested a fair bit of money, a fair bit of time, uh, and resources to be on that uh, footing uh, with the one-to-one -one program. It was about three years ago we made the decision, and um, I want to recognize several people um, that were involved in that decision and did the heavy, heavy work related to that decision because hardware had to be pick, picked, software had to be picked, there was a lot of professional development time the teachers uh, implemented uh, to make sure that we're just not getting a fancy piece of paper here, but we're actually using the resources and tools available to us with the system and hardware to affect the learning environment uh, of the school. So. Um, People that were directly involved with this uh, decision, Jeff Taylor, uh, who was with the board at the time, certainly was leading the uh, charge towards moving to a one-to-one -one program. Uh, Lawrence Whitfield actually joined our one-to-one -one team, transition team, as we were getting on board. He came on board as a consultant. Um, piece of paper so I can remember names. Other people involved, certainly Kathleen Manson, uh, who was our IT manager at the time, and John DeGelder, who is our current IT manager, that was heavily involved. They were both heavily involved in uh, getting the one-to-one -one program off the ground. Uh, Eli Banta and Sam, Samantha Reimer were very involved in deciding about hardware, software, uh, and just what tools will help teachers in doing a lot of the PD time. And certainly Kerry Kennedy was heavily involved, and Don Rose was heavily involved. So. Um, that list of people were in a lot of different meetings and not only the time invested but there was a lot of money invested. The school invested about $350,000 uh, two or three years ago to get these devices in the hands of our students uh, and we'll continue to make a similar investment every three years uh, as we need to retire these devices to refresh them for other students. So having said all that, when COVID hit I asked the question of Kerry Kennedy, are we able to move to an online environment after March break? And without hesitation, Kerry said we are able to and we're ready to. Um, and that was just amazing to me. Um, you may have seen the reports of the public schools that are having trouble moving to an online environment. Uh, I certainly wit witnessed with my wife the challenges of having teachers teach from home and our teachers were able to do that the very day after March break uh, ended uh, and our students didn't miss any time uh, in their class either virtually or in class because we were able to pivot like that and we were so well positioned. So I don't think very often we can say that Great Lakes is on the cutting edge technology like we were at this point in time but we were certainly well prepared financially uh, and equipment and training wise at the right time to be able to do this for the school uh, and it caused us to get a very good reputation with our parents with how well we were able to transition uh, despite 
uh, what was facing us uh, with the disruption of uh, students. Like, we had to shut down our dorms uh, for the most part at COVID. Most of our students went back home to their homes internationally or their homes in Ontario and did not return to the dorms. Uh, we had about 10 or 15 students that didn't have homes in Ontario they could go to, that we kept a skeleton staff in the dorm open. Uh, but for the most part, our dorms were, were shut down. Um, so, and our teachers were teaching from their homes. Our campus was empty. And we were able to transition with that very, very smoothly. And I'm very thankful. Um, and I, I think I see God's hand in this, that we were so well positioned to make this transition. Other concerns, um, well, with COVID, of course, many businesses uh, lost their customers. Uh, I think of a restaurant that had to be shut down. They had no revenue uh, during the period of time that the government was shutting them down. In our situation, that was not the case, especially because the learning continued on after March break. So we continued to see, receive our tuition fee income for the education we provided. We still graduated students. And so we did not suffer operationally the way a lot of businesses suffered uh, in the spring with COVID. Um, I will say the challenge to the school was with our residential department because we had most of our students return or leave the dorm and the preschool had to shut down after March break. The government would not allow preschools to continue uh, until they uh, understood what they could do with uh, how they would manage COVID in that environment, which is where we are today. So a couple big things I can think of that I just want to, as a background, have uh, um, uh, kind of mentioned to provide some reference points as we go through the financials. So I will now uh, go through the financials, John, and we'll start with the uh, first page, which is uh, the income statement. Um, just generally speaking, there's two types of financial statements that I'm going to refer to uh, in this presentation. And one is the income statement, and the second is the balance sheet. And with the income statement, you can think of an income statement as it's a measure of time. It tells us how much we received in revenue and what were our expenses from the beginning of the school year to the end of the school year, or the beginning of our fiscal year to the end of our fiscal year. It's basically the financial result of all your activity, uh, both revenue, donations, and expenses. So that's the income statement, as opposed to a balance sheet, which we'll talk about later, which is more of a snapshot of where was the school in terms of its cash balances at the end of the fiscal year? Where was the school in terms of accounts receivable, uh, in terms of fixed assets and how much money do we owe people. So that is more of a fixed position, a snapshot uh, in time, and we'll refer to the balance sheet at the, um, at the end of the presentation. But let's go back to the income statement. So looking at this income statement, it's a little more complicated than most income statements because charitable organizations are required to report uh, financially on a fund basis, which means we have to divide the operation up into different funds that represent it. So uh, the first column is the general fund and each, each fund we're reporting on, we're going to have a comparison year, two, 2020 and 2019. And then, so the general fund is where all the activity is for the most part for the operation of our school. We have our fees, preschool fees, the expenses, the, rev, uh, the donation revenue, uh, residential expenses, that's all pretty much in the general fund. That's where all the activity is, for the most part. And then we have a capital asset fund, which holds all the assets, uh, including the land and buildings, uh, desks, computers, uh, for the organizations. There is the student aid fund, which basically is money that's been donated, uh, which is, um, uh, controlled by the board and uh, restricted by the board, but they can unrestrict it at any time they like. Uh, whereas the endowment fund has restrictions that nobody uh, except the donor can change those restrictions. And then on the far right column uh, is the uh, totals for all the funds combined. Um, so you have basically 
five columns with two different years in each for each fund. So getting down into the detail as to what these statements uh, highlight, at the very bottom line, uh, if you're to say, okay, well, where, where did we end up in terms of our net uh, revenue against expenses? What's the bottom line? And you see the first number at the bottom there for excess of revenue over expenses is $213,000. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna talk in terms of thousands. Um, versus last year, it was $168,000. So that's good. We're, we have more uh, net revenue uh, than we did uh, last year. And you, you would stand back and say, whoa, the school made a lot of money. That's almost a quarter million dollars, Jim. And it is a lot of money, and I do recognize that. Uh, but with our situation, um, we were able to apply for uh, funding from the government, the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy, uh, which you'll see on the financials. But that a lot of that is generating this result that you're seeing here, the surplus. So um, we're grateful for the wage subsidy, grateful that uh, the school was able to take advantage of that and did, did uh, uh, succeed in our application for it. Um, that we do qualify. However, I want to recognize that a lot of the financial hurt from COVID may not happen until this current year. Uh, so while we were able to maintain things, uh, except for residential and preschool last year, uh, this year we have a lot less students on campus, which is helping us with our physical distancing but there's a lot less students in the dorms um, and a lot of students are involved with the school um, on an online basis. So we have our financial challenges this year and we've incurred a lot of new expenses in coping um, and responding to the COVID challenge. So while we have a great surplus this year, we're going to need those funds from the surplus this year to weather the storm uh, in the next year, uh, depending on how uh, things work out. So uh, it's kind of helping us for a rainy day and certainly helping us through this year. Okay, focusing on the general fund, uh, which represents the core of our revenue and expenses. Revenue over expenses um, grew uh, from the prior year. And so the numbers are even higher here because uh, the uh, capital asset fund deficit doesn't affect it. So we, in the general fund, we had $420,000, $21,000 excess revenue over expenses versus about $300,000 last year. So again, I bring our, my comment about the Canadian Emergency Wage, wage subsidy, subsidy but $365,000 is reflected in that 421 excess revenue over disbursements. High school fees were lower this year due, due to a lower enrollment from 2019. Um, enrollment is a very important thing to the school and we have a, um, a good enrollment level. I wouldn't say it's a desperate level, level but we do uh, want to see it rise to the 2019-2018 levels uh, that we are in a bit of a current dip right now. So that's why student fee income is lower. And of course, the um, refunds that we had to issue because students weren't in the dorm for three months also meant we had lower residential revenue, which is reflected in high school fees. Donations are up 461,000 from 343. You have a note there. Donation revenue increased due to earlier receipt of some large donations and a bequest was received this year, which is when someone passes away and leaves the school in, in its will. Um, so we're thankful for that. Um, you'll see in the detailed financial statements if you request them, the uh, donation level, one reason it, it increased a lot was one of our larger donors decided to uh, give twice in our fiscal year, even though they were only giving once in their fiscal year, 
by giving once in both uh, fiscal years, it basically doubled their level of donation, uh, even though it's still once a year for them. But it, it reflects reflects in a double up in that last fiscal year of 2020, and um, that higher level of donations won't be an ongoing thing that we can de depend on because they'll be giving annually on the same time frame in the future. Okay, the surplus before the subsidy, um, subsidy was $365,000. The surplus before the subsidy, if you take 365 off of 421, is about $56,000. Fifty-six thousand um, dollars. If you ask me, where is the subsidy? We are just applying for it now with the government, so it's actually reflected in the uh, other revenue, which is it's a receivable uh, of three hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars. It's in the six hundred and six thousand dollars, which is the fourth line down. So, what else is in there? Well, there's other other income and other items. That, that normally uh, operationally just build into that number, but a large amount of it is the subsidy. Okay, we had some lower, now we're moving to the expense side of the income statement. We, we uh, realized uh, lower expenses due to uh, the online learning um, in the high school environment. Uh, think about it. Um, the field trips, for example, did not happen in the spring. Uh, some other costs that we normally incur during the spring didn't happen. Uh, so we have some lower uh, program costs. We were able to realize some savings in our cafeteria and our residential department. Not entirely though, because we did have to maintain some staff for the 10 to 15 students that remained on campus during COVID. Preschool had some lower uh, expenses uh, because they were shut down. We decided though that because we were receiving the wage subsidy from the government that we should not lay off the preschool staff. Um, that that was almost a, an agreement, underlying agreement of if you're going to receive these subsidies the government expects you to not lay off staff. So we're happy that we were uh, able to continue and pay our preschool staff despite the preschool being shut down by COVID. So this repeats what I was saying about where the wage subsidy is on the 606 line. And uh, a lot of what I just said is on this slide. Capital donations. So on capital, on the donation line for the capital asset fund, you see $83,000 and uh, $104,000 last year. That all relates to the early fundraising efforts uh, in conjunction with the Vision 2020 campaign. Uh, this campaign, uh, the board uh, did decide that we should not pursue the 2020 campaign this year when COVID um, hit us, uh, that it wasn't the right environment to start a, a fairly significant, significant capital campaign. So that money is being held in trust and is being deferred for when the uh, uh, the organization will restart its capital campaign uh, for the 2020 campaign because we certainly want to do that but we need to find the right timing and with all the disruption that everyone's uh, dealing with now now is not the time student aid fund this is money that's internally restricted by the board uh, and generally the income goes towards funding scholarships and student aid endowment is externally restricted by a donor so if somebody passes away or they leave us a large amount of money and they say we want it to go to this uh, specific uh, type of student or um, uh, a good example is quite often um, a restricted gift says uh, they want it to go to a student of alumni or maybe a new student that's new to the school a new family uh, sometimes it's to assist families that have financial challenges. Those are things that are written into the endowment funds that we, uh, we uh, it's externally re restricted, so we have to pay attention to that. And those funds, the income from those funds also goes to fund 
scholarships, but those scholarships have to meet the restrictions of the endowment fund. So we had about $8,000 in endowment income and $8,300 in student aid fund income, and that just gets transferred over to the uh, general fund to fund uh, its part of the surplus that you see. The organization as a whole had a surplus of 213000 when you combine all the different funds together. If the government subsidy didn't happen, if we didn't receive that 365000 uh, the deficit, negative, would have been 151000 And that's with a result of lower enrollment and uh, the disruption of COVID and lower revenue residentially. Uh, and lower revenue for the preschool, which is creating that deficit. But because the government subsidy come, came into play, it's now a surplus of $213,000. Okay, now I want to move to the balance sheet, which is the snapshot of where we were as at June 30th, 2020. And again, you have the comparisons, and we do the same thing in terms of looking at it by each fund. Um, but the total cash position for the school when you add up all of our funds was $1.2 million uh, as opposed to last year, which was 1.1. So our cash position grew by about $100,000. And you think, whoa, what did we sell? Where did that money come from? Well, that actually represents about uh, four to five uh, international students, depending on which package uh, they're paying for. So it's not really not that uh, significant a, a change. Other assets include the wage subsidy in that 571, because uh, it, it is set up as a receivable. We've applied for it uh, with the government, and now we're waiting for it to come in. And so that's part of the 571. Prepaid student fees. Uh, these are fees that we receive usually in the spring, uh, before the year begins on July 1st. Uh, the fiscal year begins on July 1st, so we hold those as liabilities. Um, so last year's prepaid fees are a liability to next year's, next fiscal year. So um, that is money that the 2020 year fiscal year owes the 2021 fiscal year, $1.5 thousand dollars. One million five thousand five hundred and seven thousand dollars uh, is the prepaid student fees. Last year it was one million four oh eight. So again, another hundred thousand dollars more, uh, which could represent you know three to four international students. Net book value that represents all of our assets less our liabilities. So what are the assets when you, all the assets of the school, uh, all the buildings, all the cash, all the uh, furniture and equipment, uh, and the investments, what are the, and you take away what we owe to people, uh, including uh, the prepaid fees, uh, it's $2.2 million, 65,000. 2265, down in the bottom right corner, you see that it's grown from last year which was at almost $2 million and 53000 So we've grown by about $200,000, which is um, very similar to the amount that was uh, represented by the Canadian wage, emergency wage subsidy. So all that receivable, which will become cash uh, in the near future, um, enhances the assets of the school, which is why net book value increased. We didn't buy a lot of capital assets. Looking at the capital asset fund, you see that it went down uh, from $2.6 million to $2.4 million. Uh, so why did it go down by $200,000? Well, because we're about to start the capital uh, Vision 2020 campaign, we did not want to make a lot of investments uh, in uh, infrastructure with the school, and we just did with the one-to-one -one program. So we we're kind of uh, putting a freeze on capital assets, but so why did it go down? Well, that's depreciation. How the school 
or how, how businesses actually pay for their assets is they depreciate them or allocate the expense of them over a number of years. And of course, all the different assets have different years of depreciation, um, but that's why that number goes down because as you depreciate or amortize your assets, it will go down. And so it went down from 2.6 to 2.4. Okay, that's the end of the uh, financial report for the school and I plan to uh, join Don online uh, after the presentations uh, to answer any questions that you, you may have uh, that have gone beyond this presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have a motion on the table moved that the Great Lakes Christian College 2019-2020 financial report be approved as presented we have a mover in Lawrence Whitfield and seconded by Linda Smith. And we have an opportunity for some discussion before we vote on that motion. So is, are there any questions out there in YouTube land? If so, you can fire it into the chat. I actually have Jim, he's not here physically, but I have him on a Zoom and you can hear him. Jim, why don't you say hello? Oh, I gotta unmute my I actually computer. have Jim, he's not here physically. Oh, he's, he's playing our video, so when I unmute, I'm hearing YouTube. Oh, I gotta unmute my actually have. <laughs> well, he's gonna have to mute. Okay. So we'll just wait a second, see if there are any questions out there. Ah, make good sure question. You, make sure you mute your YouTube. Yeah. Oh, I see it's my YouTube. Okay, one question that was asked is what is the enrollment at the preschool? Um, the one lamentation that I do have today, uh, if, if you understand that all, all school administrators have been buried, Heather Moyer has, uh, just as much if not more than uh, Carrie Kennedy has as the principal of the high school. Um, they have, I believe, 35. I have to verify that and send it to you because they have several restrictions in terms of numbers and space. Uh, but I believe, I mean, they're at their capacity, but that's limited by restrictions due to COVID. So thank you for that question. Okay, I'm gonna ask Brad Cook to make the motion live. A couple people joined us after the first motion. So if you have followed the link You'll see two orange boxes and one at the top is continue to meeting. You will see that there are several motions when you click that link. The second motion is now live. So if you support that motion, please vote now. Just while we're uh, giving people a moment or two to vote on that one, we do want to report back on the first motion which was passed. Uh, we had a couple people abstain simply because they weren't at the meeting last year, but it, it passed. Now while we are waiting for that motion to be closed, we're going to open the next one in just a moment. The second motion in response to the financial presentation is moved that South Cod Nivoli chartered accountants be appointed as the independent review practitioners, or in this case, yep, that's it, for Great Lakes Christian College for the 2020-2021 fiscal year. That has been moved by Bob Ammerman, and that was seconded by Mark Knutson. And are there any questions or discussion on uh, this motion? Again, you can use your YouTube chat if you have any questions. Okay, we'll close the last motion and we'll open this one for voting and if you could take a moment and vote on that now.
So we're grateful to Jim Whitfield. We're going to continue with his second presentation, which is going to be the statements and presentation of the um, uh, for JLBC. Again, that is a pre-recorded video. So if you have any questions, you can ask them during the presentation in the YouTube live chat, and we'll make sure they get answered at the end. Or when we pass the motions for JLBC, there'll be an opportunity for discussion after the presentation. So back to Jim for JLBC. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome the members of the uh, GLBC Corporation. My name is Jim Whitfield. Uh, I work with Jim Dale uh, on the finances of uh, both GLCC and GLBC. I'd like to run through the financial report for the year ended June 30, uh, 2020 to give you an overview of the finances of GLBC. So just an overall look at how we do the finances uh, of the two different schools. Both schools have fund accounting and at GLBC that means that we have a general fund which is where all the results of the revenue and expenses on a daily basis occur. We have a student aid fund which has the investments of the school. Uh, we have an endowment fund which is also a different type of investment. And then that all totals into the total columns that you have on the right hand. Uh, but there's three different funds that we're working with. So looking specifically at the general fund of GLBC, we have an ongoing decline in full-time student revenue. This continues a multi-year trend. Uh, Jim Dale has provided a nifty little graph that you see on the right hand corner that shows this uh, decline in terms of revenue. Uh, in total for the school uh, and where we're at in 2020. Donations have also declined from $184,000 to $115,000. Donations the year before included a $40,000 request, which was not re repeated this year, which is one reason for the decline. And also, many of the year-end fundraising events for both schools could not occur after March uh, because of physical distancing requirements. And so we have a decline, corresponding decline in fundraising revenue that's reflected in donations also. Okay, looking at program expenses for the Bible College. Expenses increased this year with the hire of an administrative assistance, which is included in the program expenses, and development expenses uh, declined due to the ca cancellation of things like the graduation dinner and reduced travel, which is usually done for fundraising. Uh, so that's decline in the development expenses. Looking at the endowment fund, the endowment fund earned uh, sorry, $1,333 uh, in investment income, which is down by 3,000, which is down from 3,355. Then uh, the net result of that was $1,173, which is transferred over to the general fund for the purposes of uh, student aid and scholarships. Why was uh, income down? Well, the income is a result of the market fluctuations, of course, the interest income that's earned on the investments, and the uh, uh, we had an increase in uninvested cash uh, in both schools, uh, and the board is taking steps to ensure that uninvest uninvested cash amounts are being invested. But while amounts are uninvested, it, it has an impact on the investment income because you won't earn as much investment income when the cash is not invested. So that's steps that are being taken to rectify that situation. All, fine, all funds combined on the right-hand column resulted in a net deficit for the school of $25,817,000. Uh, this deficit would have been about $16,000 higher if the Bible College had not received 
the government assistance in the form of the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy. So we're thankful for that $16,000. Uh, the school may qualify for more money uh, in the uh, fall of the current year, but that depends on uh, the revenues of the organization and if it meets the definition of the decline, the required decline of revenues for those subsidy amounts. And so those uh, amounts are being looked at presently. But the deficit could have been uh, about $40,000 if it wasn't for the wage subsidy that we received from the government. General fund cash position decreased uh, due, expense, due to expenses and revenue, uh, expenses exceeding revenue by about $27,000. So that's where your loss tends to show up. Where do losses go? Losses usually will end up in a decreased value of cash to the organization. The note receivable went down from $153,000 to $135,000, that's the note receivable uh, from Great Lakes Christian College related to the sale of the McPhee uh, building on the GLCC site. So as GLCC pays off that loan, the receivable decreases because you're not owed as much money as you were the previous year. The endowment fund balance increased modestly this year due to an increase in market value and those, those increases and decreases will fluctuate uh, over time, but that's why the uh, uh, fund balance has increased. In total, on the far right column, the total surplus of all funds decreased by about $12,000 or 2.5% and you would expect that given the, uh, the loss that the Bible College had this year, which was as a result of decreased students, um, full-time equivalent students, and a decrease in donation revenue. So that include, uh, concludes my presentation on the uh, details of the finances of the Bible College. I will be logging in uh, to answer questions in the afternoon. Um, of this presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, I wonder if Mike, uh, I don't know if we missed something there. We're going to put the motion on the table and then we'll have an opportunity to answer questions and have some discussion. And like I said, Jim is available uh, from a distance to answer some of those questions if you have them. But the motion on the table is moved the Great Lakes Bible College 2019-2020 financial report be approved as presented. That has been moved by Paul Moore and seconded by Ashley Hibbard. So before we do that, this was a point that I missed. It was caught in the chat. Right now we're talking about two motions in a row that are for GLBC. And so we have a handful of corporation members who are GLCC only. You should not vote on this motion. Uh, and similarly, uh, if it was a GLCC motion, we did see that, that some GLBC only people did abstain, thank you, from those ones. So this is GLBC corporation members uh, only or people who are corporation members of both corporations. Okay, an opportunity for uh, questions and discussion. Yeah, just while we're waiting, there's a little bit of a lag from what we record and what you see. And so that's why there's some of these, uh, these gaps. But I do want to say that the two motions for GLCC, uh, for our uh, accountants to review, and for the, mo the uh, financial report were both uh, passed. Okay, if there are no questions or discussion, please take a moment. The motion is about to be opened and vote. Okay. 
Good question. All right, Jim, you can hear me online. Is that correct? Jim Whitfield? Jim Whitfield, can you hear me? I can't, I can't hear you. So uh, Jeff Taylor has a question, Jim Whitfield. Can someone speak to the internally restricted amounts, line six on page five? Page four. So Jim is unable to uh, hear me. Now, he has seen the question. I'm going to give him a few moments. But what we will do is we'll put, at least put out the second motion for GLBC. The second motion for GLBC related to finances is move that Southcott Devoli chartered accountants be appointed as the independent review practitioners for Great Lakes Bible College for the 2020-2021 fiscal year. That was moved also by Paul Moore and seconded by Ashley Hibbard. Uh, there is an opportunity if you have a question on that, it will go live in a moment and we'll see what we can do to get to your question, Jeff. Thank you, Ashley and Jim, for jumping in on that on the live chat. We'll leave that second motion open for a moment, report back on those. Just as a reminder, or so you were aware as corporation members, there are some changes to our boards this year. For GLBC, there is no one leaving the GLBC Board of Trustees, but Beth Hibbert, Greg Tui, and Emmanuel Velasco have completed terms and have agreed to continue. And we welcome John Smith from Weyburn, Saskatchewan. So the GLBC Board of Trustees has 15 seats, which means uh, they have two open. And so again, one of the privileges and responsibilities of a corporation is to nominate potential board members. So if you are here and not uh, on one of the boards, would like to serve in that way or know someone uh, that might be a good fit, uh, we encourage you to either reach out to them or let us know and we can approach them. Uh, all of those people, because there isn't an election, we don't have a vote as, as, uh, or per se. However, as a corporation member, should you have any uh, questions or concerns about any of the people who are serving or coming to the board, please make us aware of that uh, so that we can record it. At GLCC, Lawrence Whitfield has to step down after serving nine consecutive years, not the first time he's done that. So he needs to step down for at least a year. 
and we're grateful for all of his service. Uh, Linda Smith and Noel Walker have completed terms, and they will continue into new terms. And Jamie Tolman, who stepped down last year after nine consecutive years, yep. has agreed to stand uh, again. So uh, nine of our 12 seats, so the GLCC Board of Directors uh, only has 12 seats versus the 15 that GLBC has. And we have 12, and sorry, and we have nine of those seats. So we have three vacancies on the GLCC side. And again, uh, we just encourage you, if that's a way in which you think you could serve our schools or know someone who could, uh, please let us know because we'd love to have all of our seats full on both of our uh, boards. Okay, on the two GLBC motions, we'll just get a report back here. Uh, first one's good. Okay, the first one is good. No dissension? No. Yep, passed. Yes, the second one, there's a couple of people on board that want to close it. Okay, we're just, oh yes, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because there'll be uh, GLCC on that. Yes, and the other motion is passed. So all of our motions today passed. We're going to go now to a, uh, a video that okay. has been submitted by uh, GLBC, a PowerPoint presentation to share with you what's happening at Great Lakes Bible College in Waterloo. Good afternoon. My name is Emmanuel Velasco. I am the board chair for the Great Lakes Bible College this year, and it's my pleasure to welcome you this afternoon. This afternoon, you're going to hear from a few of our staff members and board members, and each of us is just going to share a little bit about the school this year. Hi, I'm Paul Rasmussen, president of Great Lakes Bible College. I'm a planner, and 2020 certainly was a year for planning and vision and strategy. Well, 2020 had other plans. I have thought often that it feels like planning for this year was often like uh, having, having your uh, spices grinded into powder. My plans were placed into a bowl and crushed into nothing. But we've had to respond and adjust and think on the fly. And so there's been positives that have come from it. And the, the biggest uh, being a reminder, the reminder to trust in God and that God is still in control. I have taken great refuge in the fact that Jesus is still king. Nothing's changed that and nothing will ever change that. Jesus's church will will not stop. And Jesus's church cannot be defeated. The gates of Hades cannot even stop Jesus's church. And so I take a great amount of comfort and encouragement through that. Now our plans and how we've responded as a Bible college um, is certainly moving um, everything online. And we've been fortunate that we already have an online presence. And so it hasn't been a huge adjustment for us. But we're still continuing with our mission statement, and that is to equip disciples in the word to make an impact in Canada and the world. Uh, even though we're mostly online, um, that's still an opportunity as we've improved um, our website, as we've continued to improve um, and implement this fall learning management system and our social media presence. We've been able to get our inf more information out there, and we're getting inquiries, uh, inquiries from uh, really all over. And so we've seen an increase in that, people interested in taking a college level education, taking classes and interested in, in our mission. Uh, and part of that mission as well as our, our learning paradigm, uh, Bible ministry and worldview, which I'm really excited about as we learn how to implement it and continue to push that in, into each course, but also how that forms the, the entire program at Great Lakes Bible College. Uh, it's important to remember that everything we do is founded on the Bible. Every course that we teach, everything we learn, the Bible has something to say about it. And so we want to go to God's Word to have that shape us and form us as we go into this world. That's going to be how we make an impact, and God will speak to us through that. Because the Bible is our foundation, well, that means we're going to do something about it. It forms our ministries. We're all ministers. We are, uh, we are a priesthood of saints. 
and we are going into this world to make an impact. So the Bible needs to impact our ministries. And there's also a world, there's a worldview that is being shaped in our lives and we're encountering a variety of different worldviews in our culture and the world around us. And this is why I'm so excited about that learning paradigm that we start with the Bible. In any course, we see what does scripture say about this topic? How does this topic inform my ministry? What am I gonna do about it? There's an application to be had that I can go serve and be a blessing to others. But there's also a worldview being created as well. As we live out our faith and seek ways to be a blessing, um, a worldview is being shaped. And it's a worldview shaped and, and founded in, in God himself. And we need to have an understanding of our culture. We need to have an understanding of those around us if we hope to make an impact, as we listen to where other people have come from and their stories and what shaped them for us to faithfully respond um, to serve and, and care for them to, and to ultimately show them who Jesus is. Uh, so even though this has been an extremely challenging year, I know God has refined um, certainly me through the process and I know many others and I'm watching a lot of people capture a real vision uh, for the church, uh, for ministry, and to go into this world to make an impact. And, um, so I'm excited for how the year is going to end and what 2021 has to offer. Greetings in Jesus. Our fall 2020 term is starting well with a full course schedule, excellent access to resources through our new learning management system, and a high level of interest and engagement in our students. We have three courses from our Bible category. Our Old Testament course is Job, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes, the wisdom literature, one of three evening courses, increasing access for our students working daytime hours. From the New Testament, we have Romans and Galatians, so important in our appreciation of the amazing gospel of our salvation. Introduction to Biblical Greek, one, is a wonderful foundation for preaching, teaching, apologetics, and evangelism. Building on these scriptural foundations in our ministry course in Biblical Preaching, we learn from preachers in the Bible, their sermons and their skills, notably from Jesus, who is the greatest preacher of all time, and the message preached. Introduction to Worldviews is our core course in this category, helpful in understanding God's view of his world, our biblical worldview, and the worldviews of others around us locally and globally. Church History is our second worldviews course, very helpful in understanding the backgrounds of where others are coming from. Our new learning management system is proving to be very helpful in the process of registration and as a central hub for student access to course descriptions, class recordings, and uploaded resources. We are blessed with a high level of interest in all our students. They're engaged in their churches, three on a salary basis. In the East, we have 10 students from Ontario and one from New York. In the West, we have five from Manitoba and one from Alberta. We have two very bright 2020 grade 12 graduates and a former student returning with determination to complete his degree. In addition to these 17, we have credit students finishing summer courses. We're excited to have six students in Intro to Biblical Greek. One, we invite you all to our chapel talks Wednesdays at noon beginning in October. We will send you a link to join us. Looking forward to our spring 2021 term, we have another excellent offering of courses, Samuel to Kings, Gospel of John, Intro to Greek II, Worship, Church History II, Understanding and Engaging Culture, and Intro to Counseling. On behalf of your administration, faculty, students, and all their families and churches, we thank you for your support and for your prayers for another productive year with God and his word. God bless you and keep you all. Hi, my name is Judy Robbins and I'm new to the Great Lakes Bible College family this year as administrative assistant. 
I found it a really exciting time to be part of GLBC this year. We have had the opportunity to engage with our community in a much broader context this summer with our webinar series. And really this is because uh, the pandemic changed how we normally gather. We've implemented a number of new technologies to streamline administrative processes. And most recently, we welcomed new students for full-time learning for the fall semester. As the administrator contact, I'm pretty deep in the day-to-day -day workings of our new software programs. And one of these new platforms is called Populi. It's an all-in-one college management system that integrates student information, uh, admissions, tuition management, learning, school communications, and a whole lot more into a single online program. With Populi, we're now able to offer new student applications as well as returning student registration and tuition payment fully online and really streamlining the pro process and hopefully making things a lot easier. We do hope this ease of access will encourage more of our cross Canada community and friends over the border, as well as new students uh, from all over to come and study God's word with us. So this summer was spent creating the framework of our school site on Populi, and we're now in the process of fine tuning, tweaking, furnishing the site, really just building things up. A lot of our course material will, we're, will be building up um, as the semester and year progresses. Some of you watching may have had the opportunity to use Populi during our free course offerings this summer when we had offered uh, the Gospel of Mark and Biblical Geography. For those of you who uh, had a chance to start using Populi, please feel free to reach out and let us know your thoughts, what you liked, what you think needs improvement. I will be listening. Uh, be sure to also take a look at our school website. Um, we're continually in the process of updating information and uh, making navigation a lot easier. So, you know, keep in touch with us on our website and, uh, and all of us come take a visit every, whenever you think of it, whenever you have a chance. And I'm really looking forward to the year ahead with GLBC as uh, together we seek God's wisdom for growth and for our next steps. Thank you. Hi, it's Emmanuel here again. In the center of this slide, you'll be able to see a listing of the 2020-2021 board. And those numbers there just indicate the year that each of us started with the board. Um, and each of us are serving three year terms. You'll notice that at the bottom, there are two vacant positions. So I'll take this moment to actually invite you, if you are interested or you know somebody who might be interested in serving with our board, please do get in touch with us and we'll try to find some space. You can see that Jay Manimtim and John Smith have been added to our board and they're giving a bit of representation from out west. On the right hand side, you can see a quick little photo of our GLBC executive from 2020. Uh, as I know many of you probably are, we have been conducting our meetings virtually. Part of our mission at the Bible College is equipping disciples in the word to make an impact in Canada and the world. In our next slide, we're going to talk a little bit about how we're doing that. On this slide, we just wanted to talk about a few things that we are doing here at the Bible College to help equip disciples today. The first thing we've started to do is gather feedback from students and congregations. You may have seen in your email or on our social media an invitation to fill out a survey. If you haven't already done that, I encourage you to go back and do fill that out. We want to know what are the challenges uh, in your congregation? What are you looking for in a Bible college? And ultimately, how we can be of service to you and to God's kingdom. Another thing that our staff has already done is reviewed the entire curriculum and approached it through a Bible ministry worldview uh, approach. So all of our courses, uh, as Paul mentioned, uh, will be providing relevant, relevant information for today's world. So either providing that, that Bible foundation and how you can apply it in ministry or 
how you can uh, approach your worldview and, and manage uh, the worldview. We're also making it easier for students. So if you are a student and money is a problem, we don't want it to be a problem. We are offering 50% tuition discounts for anyone who's taking a four credit course. And if that's not enough, please do get in touch with Paul Rasmussen and he'll arrange something. We, we do really, really do not want to uh, have money be the issue. Also, we don't want geography to be an issue. So Judy's mentioned quite a few things that we are, have done to take our classes online. Uh, and actually, uh, we were already online, really just to make that even better. And so geography shouldn't be a problem. And of course, we're going to continue to, as we get feedback, uh, commit to improving on an ongoing basis. Hi friends, and thanks for being with us today. I'd just like to take a few minutes. So just jumping in, as we go into uh, Glenn's financial appeal for GLBC, we're just working out a technical glitch. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't flipped upside down, which I'm sure he didn't intend and doesn't want to provide. I do want to say I'm sorry that I missed uh, Jay. So there were two changes on both of our boards after the last mailing went out. One was that Jamie Tallman was coming back and that Jay was joining the GLBC board of uh, trustees. Um, we will, as soon as this next video is done, I think Glenn is covering everything, Bob, that was on that slide, but we can throw that back up uh, when he's finished for just a moment before we continue. Thank you for your grace and your patience. Hi friends, and thanks for being with us today. I'd just like to take a few minutes to share some things with you. First, um, it's been over 10 years since my wife Ashley and I uh, have graduated from the Bible College. And last year in March of 2019, we decided to pick up our family and move from Kitchener to Hamilton to work full time with Stony Creek Church of Christ. 
And that was a move that we were able to make in confidence in part because uh, we truly felt that God was, was calling us here, but also because we felt that God had used Great Lakes Bible College to train us and prepare and equip us give us the tools that were necessary to work with a church full-time. Um, and so that's part of the reason that we felt that we could come here and that we could work with the church full-time, invest with the church and in, in our community. And so uh, the first thing I'd like to do uh, this afternoon is, is to say thank you. Thank you to uh, those of you who've been supporting the school for a long time, who are long-term donors, uh, those who were supporting even 10 years ago. Um, it gave us a, a, a great opportunity, gave us the possibility to be equipped in the way um, that we are and to engage in the work that we are in right now. So thank you for uh, doing things like um, paying the rent for the school, uh, paying our teachers salaries, putting books in the library, buying the equipment that the school uses. And I know that you yourself didn't write those checks, but in a sense, you kind of did. You, you supported the school and made the writing of those checks possible. And so one of the things I'd like to do is, is to ask you, for those of you who are long-term donors, to continue to give to the school and give our current students the same opportunity, the same possibilities that Ashley and I felt that we, that we received. We, we happen to know one of the students, uh, one of our full-time students uh, this year personally, and would just love for him uh, to be able to receive the same opportunities. Um, so for those of you who are uh, current donors, thank you and please continue to give to the school. The second thing that I'd like to share with you though is, is, is I'd like you to realize that if you're supporting the school, you don't necessarily have to do um, that as a way, a, a means of supporting the training of others. Supporting the school can also mean that you yourself are trained. Uh, because of the pandemic, um, a lot of things have shifted. The platform for a lot of things have shifted. A lot of us are working from home. And a lot of us are, are spending more time at home, not just because of work, but I mean, we don't have to wrestle uh, through a, a commute to, to work. Um, we're not um, in, engaged in activities outside the house like soccer or hockey or piano lessons. And I mean, the weather is starting to get colder. Um, by necessity, we're going to be spending more time inside the house. And, and so uh, when we do that, we also often begin to spend more time in front of a screen. And so one of the things I'd like to ask you uh, today is, what is your plan for how you're going to be spending that time? Um, one of the courses that we have coming up this January is an introduction to Christian counseling. And that's a course that I took when I was at the Bible College. And it's one of the courses that I remember the most um, because it gave me um, some of the most practical tools that I use in day-to-day -day ministry. Um, tools for relating to others, for listening, for, um, for leading others uh, along a path. And so I would uh, suggest to you that you might consider that one of the ways that you support the school is by taking a course yourself, being trained yourself. Um, and so I would highly um, suggest that you, you head on over to our website, glbc.ca, check out our course offerings for the, for the following term, and consider what might interest you, what might help you uh, to serve your church, to serve your community, um, to even to reach out to your neighbors and your friends. The third thing I'd like to do is, is also um, ask how you, how you consider um, giving to the school. Um, as you know, we, because of the pandemic, we've not been able to hold any of our, our usual special events, such as our, our spring grad dinner and banquet. And those, I mean, those uh, occasions are, are crucial opportunities for us to, um, to make financial appeals. Um, but because we haven't had uh, those, those events this year, um, it, it really uh, stresses the importance of something like monthly giving for the school, something that we can rely on, a, 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 a way of, a sense of stability for the school. And so I, I would ask you to consider that. I, you know, a, a lot of us uh, subscribe to a, a monthly streaming service, whether it be you know, Spotify or Netflix or Disney Plus. And um, 
for some of us, we, we subscribe to all of those be, be, because, you know, the, the monthly fee for each of those services is, um, is, is relatively inexpensive. But when you take all of the people who subscribe to one of those services and you multiply that by the monthly fee that they are paying, it's, it's no longer a small number, an, in, an insignificant number. And so if we had, you know, 300 people donating $5 a month to the Bible College, I mean, that would be, over the course of year, $18,000. And that's, again, $5 a month doesn't sound like a lot, but 300 people doing that over the course of year adds up to a great amount. And so when we ask you to consider something like monthly giving, it doesn't have to be a lot. You know, $5 a month, $10 a month, $20 a month. Um, you know, and some of us spend that much in a week at the drive through at Tim Hortons. So what, what I would ask is if you could consider, uh, if you could plan in your, in your monthly giving to be, to be able to include the Bible College in that and, and consider how you could give monthly to the Bible College. Uh, we, we certainly don't want to dismiss one-time gifts. Uh, we certainly rely on a lot of those at our special events. And we've certainly enjoyed and we thank uh, those of you who have gifted us, um, we've certainly enjoyed um, a number of bequests over the past few years from brothers and sisters in, in the Lord who've passed away. So we're certainly thankful for those. Um, but we, 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 we want you to consider how you might um, give monthly to the school. Overall, we, we ask your support. We ask your financial support. We also ask your spiritual support that you would pray for the school and, uh, and pray for our staff, pray for our board, pray for our students as we go through in these unusual times. Thank you for uh, your, your continued support. Thank you for being with us here today. And uh, we look forward, Lord willing, that we could do this face to face next year. God bless. Oh, sorry about that. People couldn't hear me, so I have to restart. Thank you to GLBC. Appreciate the uh, time and commitment it took to submit what you were able to share today. It's kind of unusual. There are only four of us in this room, and so trying to uh, put all the pieces together has, uh, has been a challenge, but it's also been a blessing. So thank you for everyone who presented that material. Um, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you, first of all, to donors for supporters of the school, and I want to come back to that in a few minutes. I want to say thank you to corporation members because you do have privileges and responsibilities, and I know that many of you take that very seriously, and, and I want you to help us by encouraging, as you just heard from GLBC, others to consider how they can be a voice in the direction of our schools, in determining who serves on our boards, um, and, and who hold us accountable to the things that we are blessed with and that we are called to be good stewards with. I want to thank board members. I think oftentimes there isn't um, a recognition that these are volunteers who commit to several meetings every year and they have to wrestle with very challenging and, and very difficult decisions with regard uh, to our schools. And as an administrator reporting to a board, uh, I could not do what I'm doing, and neither could my administrative team without board members. So thank you for that. Um, I want to thank our staffs. Uh, you know, this has been an unprecedented time. And there are people on this call today that are working in other uh, schools and in the educational system. And it's one of the industries that has been hit. And right now, frankly, I don't know what we could do that couldn't be um, criticized because we're trying to respond to something that is unprecedented in most of our lives. And so uh, I want to thank fellow educators, and I appreciate what they bring to the table with what we're able to do. And I want to thank our staff that are here, and not just our teachers who are amazing as they adapt in the spring right now to everything that is happening, but some of the people in the background where you don't realize how much work it is to make what they're doing possible. I think about uh, Jim Dale and our finance committee and the uh, days of time to sift through 
all of the government materials, accounting materials, legislation in order to uh, help us benefit from the subsidies that we've been able to receive. I think of, I've mentioned John DeGelder in the live chat who runs our IT here, who has been tireless and uh, gracious and calm when the rest of us are pulling our hair out. I wanna thank Carrie Kennedy as the principal of the school here in Dwayne Williams, the vice principal who oversees residential. Um, there's just so many people, and I know I can't name them all. But right now, when I think about everything that is happening, it is amazing to see us come together and support one another to do the things that are important. Christian education is vital. Uh, in some ways, maybe even more now than ever. Uh, this morning, we had a devotional before the high school board meeting that was led by Noel, and he talked about the reality that sometimes it is in suffering that we understand God's grace, that we lean on him, that, that we turn to him. Now, sadly, some of us turn away from him too, but for our students, whether they're in the Bible college or the high school, we need to be able to model for them that even though we are struggling too, that we rely on a creator who is in control even when everything else doesn't seem that way. So here at the school, things have obviously changed a little bit. I want to show you a short video that just says, this is what's happening at Great Lakes that may or may not look different than most years. It starts off a little cheeky and humorous, and, uh, and then it just gives you a little glimpse of what life is looking like on our campus right now. Oh. Hi, uh, board uh, uh, directors. Uh, just uh, guess I was supposed to talk to you guys about how things have changed for me during the uh, pandemic. Uh, uh, well, I mean, really, not much has changed. Obviously, with the computers and stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, I'm able to to like uh, connect with people, and uh, it's pretty cool. So I can kind of like help them live and stuff. Just, uh, sorry, I'm just messaging a student right now. And uh, pretty much everything's the same though. Um, like, uh, well, just come with me and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of show you some of the things I'm doing with, uh, with teaching. Just a second. Uh, right, can't touch that. Uh, okay, yeah. So, but really, like, everything's smooth. Everything's good. Like, this is really good. I like what we're doing here. And uh, I mean, my teaching is more effective, I find. I have a lot more time for things that I didn't before. And um, anyways, I guess, uh, I guess I'm pretty good at um, teaching and stuff. But uh, just follow me and go. Well, like I said, I mean, there's a couple of dots and stuff, but I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, gotta grab some coffee. That's not changed, obviously. Um, there we go. You can probably hear me better now. But um, just having these laptops has been a real blessing. I've been able to stare at a screen much longer than I have been able to in the past without getting a headache. It is quite incredible. Getting coffees and stuff, I mean, and that's the cat's pajamas as it always was. I'm really blessed. So even have the cafeteria stuff, I've got my directions, and uh, it's I can read better than I've ever been able to read before. So. Cheers to that. Nothing's really changed though. Let's finish that off and we'll get a coffee. Whoops. Sorry. That's it. What do you guys think about having class outside? I like it. I, you don't have to wear a mask. So. I'm like a lie down. Yeah. Hi, Demi. Study hall is still happening as usual, even in the COVID times.
Also, we had generous donors donate two nets to be used outside. This gives the kids a chance to get outside, have some fresh air. They don't have to wear their masks outside. They want to be safe while they're playing basketball. One of the things that we've had to consider as a result of all the restrictions is how we're going to do our regular Bible and chapel programs. And I think one of the great things that's come out of it is that we've been moved into smaller groups. And so our chapels and our Bible classes are happening in groups of about six to ten students. I'm really excited about what we're doing for our Bible classes this year. Uh, because every single student in the school, online and in person, is going through the Gospel of Mark. We're using a method called the Discovery Bible Study Method, and it's a really great way to engage students in a small group setting uh, in going through Scripture. The other thing I love about it is it's equipping them uh, to read Scripture on their own. It's giving them a way to approach Scripture and to dig deeply into the Word of God. One of the other advantages of having small groups is that because we're not able to meet as a whole school in the gym for chapel, uh, we've been able to try some new things in chapel. For example, this year we're going through the Alpha Youth Series with the entire school. And so for those chapel days, the students meet in their small groups. And one of the really cool things about that opportunity is that it's completely student-led. And so student leaders are being raised up to lead their Alpha Group discussions as they dig into topics such as who is God, what is the meaning of life, who is Jesus, why did he have to die for us. And so the teachers will just come in and start the video and then the students take it from there leading their small Alpha Groups. Hey everybody, I'm speaking to you here from the space where we broadcast our chapels to the school every Wednesday and also to our students who are online. As you can see, this is also our storage room. Life definitely looks different on our campus, but I think you can see that uh, we're making the best of our circumstances. Uh, here's something we want to acknowledge. For all of us, life has been really hard. And although we want to convince ourselves that we're back to normal, we know we're a long way from there. Life is going to continue to be hard. We think about people who are on the, uh, on the front line workers and healthcare workers. We think about people who have members of their families and loved ones who've been directly affected by COVID-19. We think about industries that have been the hardest hit. I think about education, which is struggling to adapt to our current circumstances. But I think the greatest challenge is not to focus on what we are losing or what we have lost, but what we are gaining. There are ways in which we are being blessed. To try not to focus on the door that's been closed, but the one that's been opened. Not on the chaos and the uncertainty that for many of us can overwhelm us in moments at this time, but to focus on the peace and the hope of he who reigns. These were some staff and some students who just wanted to show you that we can make something good out of something that is difficult. And frankly, the only reason we can is because we're made in the image of God, and that is what he does. This year, in fact, we anticipate it's going to be harder than the last one. In fact, we feel very, very blessed by the grace of God in knowing that we anticipated a sharp decline in our enrollment that actually didn't happen. That's incredible. Or the fact that we would get some of the subsidies or that donations would increase at the end of our last fiscal year. All of these together have been a rich, rich blessing. So just like GLBC, we don't have an opportunity to have a partnership dinner uh, tonight. We don't have an opportunity to do some of the traditional ways in which we get to uh, tell people about what's happening on our campuses and the difference it is making in the kingdom. And because we can't do that, it's hard to encourage and stir the heart in people to give. But I want to tell you that in this coming year, it'll be more important than it was even in the last that was interrupted by all of these things. The first thing I want to encourage 
is it's easy. You can go to the GLBC website, you can go to our website. And if you go there, you can see a tab at the top that will say ways in which you can give. And I want to highlight that one of the things we want to encourage is growing our corporation. And so for $50 in a year, you can be a member of either the GLBC or the GLCC corporation or both, same cost, no change. And that is a donation and you can be received for that. And I want to encourage you if you're on this uh, presentation today and you're not a corporation member to consider it. Also, this morning when we were looking at our corporation lists, in June every year we send out to all of our corporation members for both schools a statement and in that statement it says whether or not you've already paid for the next year or whether your membership has come due. I know that there are a whole bunch of people who usually use the AGM or the partnership dinner every year as the time to renew their corporation membership. So if you haven't done that this year, I want to encourage you to do that sooner than later. And the easiest way to do that is, uh, is online. And when you click on that donate online and you go down, you will see that you have an option of either making a one-time donation and a drop-down menu that allows you to pick something like corporation membership. We just ask if you do that, that you indicate in the message box whether you want to be a member of one or the other corporation or both and what congregation you come from. But you can also make a monthly donation. I did not know what Glenn was going to share with you about GLBC. But I would say, although obviously both schools benefit from and deeply appreciate one-time gifts, I think a lot of times we look at our own situation, particularly in a year like this. I'm sure everyone's finances are strained for different reasons. And you go, I can't make a big one-time donation. And so we don't do anything. I want to encourage you to consider making a small monthly donation. And for the high school this year, I want you to consider doing one of two things. I want you to consider making that a, a regular general donation or to make that a donation towards Vision 2020. So Vision 2020 was a major capital campaign that we had hoped to realize in the summer of 2020. And the pandemic pushed everything aside. And so our hope is to make sure that we keep that online to happen next year. And although we didn't know it before the pandemic, one of the major parts of Vision 2020 is installing an HVAC system in this building, which doesn't have one. And so at this time, we're more acutely aware of the importance of the circulation of air and the filtration of air, in addition to issues of consistent and economical heating and cooling. And so that's a major, major part of that capital campaign. And here's the thing, many of us think if we only give a few dollars a month, it doesn't make a difference. And that's where you are very wrong. Giving five, 10, $25 a month over time is much easier for most of us. And when there are a lot of people doing it, it makes a tremendous difference. So I want to encourage you to consider doing that. If you have questions, you want to give in a different way, you don't have to give online. You can contact development at glchs.ca. You can call the school. You can uh, pick one of these areas online, but I want to challenge you to think about doing that. And to conclude today, at least for us, we seek to equip students to seek, serve, and become like Christ. And that is central to our mission. And we are continuing to make that difference in the lives of young people. We couldn't do it without your support. And the other part of that, which isn't part of the mission, doesn't say it, I don't think it's enough to just equip young people to seek, serve, and become like Christ. I think we need to equip them well. And that is more what I am trying to emphasize, is that we have opportunities to equip them well when we have a strong base of support. So I encourage you uh, to help us as we continue to fulfill that mission here at Great Lakes Christian High School. I don't know if any questions came up while I was uh, presenting. This would be your last opportunity today if you had any questions or had any further discussion. First of all, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for tuning in today. This is brand new to us. One thing I'd like to encourage you to do, um, send us some, some constructive feedback. We know that not everything went smoothly today. I appreciate some of the comments in terms of mailings and reminders. We need that kind of feedback so that it's not going to be if, when we do something like this again, we want to do it better. We want to serve our schools better. We want to serve you better. But I appreciate you taking time out of your Saturday to join us 
uh, for the time that we have been together here. Just going to grab my sheet. I think that brings us to the end of the Great Lakes Annual General Meeting for 2020. And so uh, to close this out, uh, I'm just going to say a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Almighty God and Father, first, thank you so much for those who had a vision in establishing Great Lakes Bible College and Great Lakes Christian High School. Father, thank you for the people who came after, who have built and worked on these missions in your name over the decades. Father, thank you for those who are committing themselves. Some who, who although they are paid, make great sacrifice to be part of these ministries. For all the volunteers, for the supporters, Father, we know that we are blessed by your grace. And sometimes your grace manifests itself in people and what they give and what they do and how they serve. Father, thank you. Thank you for all the people that make our small schools possible. We pray for discernment. We pray for wisdom. Father, we pray for your peace, especially in a time that is so chaotic. Father, we pray that you keep our eyes and our ears open to see the opportunities amidst all of the challenges. And Father, we pray your blessing on this school year. Father, we come to you humbly, and we pray that all we do is a glory unto you. Thank you, and may you bless us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you, and God bless you.